Hey, what's going on, guys? You're listening to the Road Trip Podcast, and it's Grego Gallagher, and I'm here with my man, Tom Ness. What's going on, man? Not too much, not too much. So, in this episode, it actually was spurred from a, a, a blog comment I got on Kinobody.com. Someone left a, a comment on, on one of my last articles talking about the Adonis belt, uh, which is like, you know, that really chiseled waist, that lean, slim waist with like, you know, that definition that goes down, you know, that V at the bottom of your abs. And so he was saying, you know, he was talking like about, you know, how he, he, he's gotten down six-pack abs, but he has trouble maintaining. Uh, maintaining that low body fat, and um, and so I decided, you know what? Instead of just writing a little comment, I might as well spur together a really good podcast because this topic is so important. Um, because so often someone will, you know, diet down to like lean, lean state, and then they'll go right back up as soon as they get to their goal. They'll just, they'll just within a few weeks, a couple months, they'll, they're right back to like. You know, they have like 15, 20 pounds to lose. And it's crazy because a lot of these people have done this three, four, five, six times. They've lost the same 20, 30 pounds six times, which is crazy. <laughs> you only want to have to lose the weight once. Well, it's uh, just a perpetual, like, yo-yo dieting cycle. It's a perpetual yo-yo dieting cycle. And I've done it a few times. Like, I mean, back in the day, um, you know, 2011, you know, I probably went from 12% body fat down to 6 to 8% body fat four or five times. <laughs> there, there, there Is that was even a, healthy? Uh, I don't. I mean, it, it's not ideal. But there was there was a period where literally my videos. I was only uploading YouTube videos like once a month when I was like lean, and then I get and then I kind of get back up to like 11, 12 percent body fat. I wouldn't be doing any videos, and then I'd get lean again. <laughs> and just because I, oh I would, and we'll talk about why that happened in this episode because it's 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 so many people have been doing it, and it's funny. It's like you know throughout that month. Um, when I was like kind of like a bit like softer, not as shredded, I'd you know go to the gym. I'd be wearing long sleeve T-shirt, sweater, and then as I was getting more ripped, <laughs> the next week, the next few weeks, because I because I would shred fat really really fast, but I wouldn't maintain it. So I would be dropping, I'd get be getting lean really quickly, but the, but then I'd go right back up. So then throughout the next few weeks, I was getting leaner. You know, then I'd be wearing like a T-shirt, you know, a V-neck, a tank top, and, and like I'd just become <laughs> more shredded, and then bam, I'd be back in the sweatshirt again, and it was awful. And so, um, and so I'm glad I'm done with that noise because right now I've been at like seven percent body fat for, you know, quite a few months, and it's been fun and enjoyable. There's no stress. Um, and so, and before, you know, I, I I would just, it would be it would become very consuming because it would like. There was times where, like, I would just kind of blow my diet, and I just would feel guilty, and so then I wouldn't want to go and hang out my, like, go to bars and, and hang out and have a good time and go out to restaurants on the weekend, because I just didn't feel like I earned it, I didn't feel like I deserved it. Um, and so, I mean, I think a lot of people can kind of resonate with this. Uh, yeah, I remember it was like summer 2011. Like, I was, I was like, way too obsessed with getting lean. And this is why in the future years I, I kind of resonated with the totally stuff, being really present, and because that helps so much. But, but um, yeah, I mean, I'd have friends that would want to go to the cottage on weekends, and then obviously you can't really control your diet very effectively or track your macros when you're out at the cottage. And so, like, I just wouldn't go because I just I, I screwed up my diet, and so like I didn't really have the room to work with. But, but anyways, um, I guess what are your th thoughts there, Tom? Is any of that kind of like can you connect with any of that? Yeah, absolutely, man. Like I've I I've done the yo-yo dieting thing. I mean, for like several years, and um and like the the methods you talk about in Keno Body definitely help you like stay at a lower body fat a lot easier. And that's kind of the stuff that we're going to get into today. But I I have a feeling that I'm not alone when I say that I've struggled with like just staying lean for easily years now. To be honest with you, and part of it is not having the right um, dietary approach in place beforehand. And the other part is thinking that, like, once I got lean to the point that I was happy with that I could, like, eat anything, and I would just, like, you know, just overindulge. And then, you know, you start gaining the weight back again. And, and uh, you know, if you don't have structure to it, believe it or not, there's structure before you lose the body fat and there's structure after you lose the body fat. And, you know, just because you might have a six-pack doesn't mean that, like, everything's open game. Um, doesn't mean that you can't have a cheat meal either every now and then, but you... I, you need the structure in order to, to either maintain or to cut. Um, and so I think part of the problem is like people cut incorrectly. And so when they get to the, you know, to a lower body fat, um, you know, they, they don't have the system or like the support in place to really support 
the body fat or the the fat that they lose. Um, you know, but the other part of it is that a lot of people just, you know, they they don't have the structure in place to even get lean to begin with. So um, it's just a constant battle. I mean, they're you know years go by and they're always you know struggling with it. And so I think that if we can lay out um, kind of the the overall strategy for like getting and staying lean in this episode, I think it uh, it would help a lot of people. Yeah, and if you guys just want to get like a, a written thing right now as far as the exact approach to maintaining that low body fat, um, and 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 exactly how to go about that, then just go to kinobody.com slash eighty. Um, we have I put something really solid together um, that's gonna just make life a lot easier. But yeah, so I mean, Tom brought really two really beautiful points. Uh, people make the mistake of of dieting incorrectly in the very beginning. And I think a lot of like diet books, quote unquote diet experts, um, perpetuate this this myth because they kind of uh, when they're talking about like like you know getting to your getting slim and skinny finally or getting shredded finally, they kind of project the idea that like once you get to that final destination, like you're fine, like you're everything is like you can just go right back to how you were before, like you're done. Like after you get to that goal, that target weight, whatever it is, you're done. Boom! Like do whatever you want. Go, you know. Yeah, it's open game. He can it's do open anything. Game. They, no one really gives you the tools uh, as far as how to maintain. And and uh, Tom was exactly right. Like after you get to your goal, um, and first you got to do it properly in the beginning. But after you get to your goal, you still have to maintain that structure. Otherwise, like you will go back. If you were someone that struggled with their weight or struggled to maintain a low body fat before and then you started you know tracking stuff and started you know getting yourself into that deficit then if you just go back to your usual eating habits you're gonna creep yourself back to where you were before um, that's mm -hmm. just how that works and, and even that happens, so, that's like the that happens to like so many people that I know even people that were like it's crazy people that like get super lean and like even like shredded to a point um, it, it's it's kind of funny, like it's sad too. But like I see them a few months later, and they're like they're pudgy again. I'm like, you just went from being like chiseled to like pudgy. What happened? And it's because like either again they died incorrectly, or they don't have a system in place to support like a maintenance mode, or they don't even know what maintenance mode is. So they, they, yeah, they, they, no, exactly. And so so let's first talk talk about the initial mistakes that people make, and that's trying to lose weight way 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 too quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, trying to drop you know, three, four pounds of fat per week. You know, if you're if you're eating very, very little, I mean I mean the the way that I like to think about it is if your diet is miserable, if you're not able to enjoy the process to getting leaner, then it's gonna be a nightmare to try and maintain because you just you you're you're just making everything a lot harder than it has to be and then you're kind of just teaching yourself that this stuff is hard work, this stuff is miserable, and so when you go from a period of just like obsessing to get to that goal and just having a horrible time, and then trying to somehow maintain it, mm -hmm. uh, it's it, it you're, you're you're it's it, it's not going to be uh, it's going to be very 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 challenging because um, you never really learn how to eat in a way that's enjoyable that supports your goals. Right. Instead, you learn how to eat in a way that's miserable that you know tries you're trying to like freaking you know, pound your, drive yourself to your goals in a miserable way, and then you don't know how to do it enjoyably, so then when you try and eat at maintenance, you end up just losing, you having no self-control. You have self-control when you eat very, very little and just eat, like, you know, chicken breast and broccoli, but then when it's when it comes time to eat more, to, to, to stay at maintenance, you know, you have some carbs or whatever it is, maybe a little dessert, cheat meal, and you just end up eating way over, so you binge eat, and so you're constantly fluctuating between you know, intense, restrictive dieting and total gluttony, and you're not enjoying either spectrum because when you eat very little, you know, you don't feel very, like, you're just, you're hungry all the time, and then when you eat too much, you feel gross, you feel sick, and you feel guilty, and so mm -hmm. there's no enjoyment there. So when you're getting leaner, find a way to make it enjoyable, and if it takes a little bit longer, that's great because the long run, at the end of the day, is going to be shorter. <laughs> Boom. Mind blown. We can just stop the episode there. We can just so, press stop. Yeah, but dude, so here's, um, I, I think, like, the, the biggest problem is that people try to lose the fat too fast. And really what it comes down to is poor planning. 
Like if you know that, like let's say you got a wedding coming up or you got an event coming up and you want to look good for it, don't wait until four weeks beforehand and then think that you have to starve yourself and do five hours of cardio every day to lose the fat that you should have been losing for the eight months prior to that event. Mm -hmm. And so like that's why, I mean, we always recommend the slower approach uh, just because it's a lot more enjoyable. But then after, okay, dude, nobody should be dieting and cutting for like eight months on end. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it just it, it shouldn't happen. Like you shouldn't your diet should not revolve around eating at a deficit for seven days a week for like 365 days. Mm -hmm. Like it just shouldn't happen. There should be a designated cutting phase, and you should do it, and you should put in the work and grind it out. Whatever you have to do, so the slower approach is obviously better because it's going to show you, you know, how to actually like if if you can if you can slow diet down to the weight that you want, the body fat that you're comfortable with it's going to be very easy to, to maintain that because you're going to have the diet structure in place to support a lower body fat. But, you know, like have a designated period of time where you're going to be cutting and get down to whatever physique you want, put in the work, get there, and then you learn how to actually maintain that once you're there. You know, don't do this whole like, oh, I got to, you know, I, I have some friends that, that are, they, they don't want to go out to eat because they don't want to blow their, their, their macros for the day because they're always like obsessed about it. And so if you're always obsessing about it, you're not going to be present. You're not going to want to go out. You're not going to want to like stray outside of your diet because you're so damn worried about it. Um, and it's like, that's not a way to live, man. It's not like you should, you should diet and cut and put in the work to get to where you want to be and then actually like flip it over to maintenance and, and maintain it instead of treating this dieting thing as like a year round struggle. Yeah, that's 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 very very well said, and like when you take it slow, it, you're not actually taking it that slow because yes, like as I mentioned before, you, the adherence is so much higher, so you're so much more likely to follow through. A lot of people that just try and really do extreme dieting, they end up dieting even though they're in a bigger deficit. They end up dieting for a lot longer because with all the they slip and they have cheat days and they binge eat and so. Every single day they're trying to be in a deficit, but then they mess it up, and so they spin their wheels, and they're just chronically just deprived. Mm -hmm. um, but, but when you take it slower, the cool thing is you'll maintain more muscle mass, or you'll build muscle. So you'll still lose a, a, you know, you lose a good considerable portion of fat, but you'll be able to make strength gains. You know, you'll be able to support better body composition, better ratio of muscle to fat. And, yeah. and, and then you're learning how to eat in a way that is enjoyable, that supports your goal, so then when you go to maintenance, it's only small little changes, um, which makes it brilliant. As, and furthermore, if you're, in, if you're doing harsh dieting, you're actually setting yourself up for a rebound because when you're in that, that extreme deficit, leptin levels, which controls your appetite and, and, and regulates your energy levels and your metabolism, um, becomes severely diminished. Um, so that's why when you're you're eating very when you're restricting your calories for a period of days and then you cheat, you can just keep eating, keep eating, keep eating, because your leptin levels are so low, um, it's it, it's going to drive up your appetite. So mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that makes it that 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 makes when you do extreme dieting, whenever you have an extreme uh, extreme you know reaction, there's going to be like a a more extreme opposite reaction. So when you go really low, eventually you if it, you will rebound. And then psychologically, you feel deprived, so you want to eat more. So um, that's why I really don't recommend that really strict extreme dieting. I found that probably some people can do an extreme cut once in their life, and then that's it. They'll never be able to do it again. You have like the the mental capacity. Well, that's because you go through it and you realize how much it sucks. How much it sucks, and then you can never do it again. No, um, actually, so uh, to give like some some. Um, you know, like just uh, so a framework of this for people. In terms of calories, what would you classify as cutting versus like extreme dieting in terms of like macros? I would say when you're cutting, like one to one and a half pounds of fat per week. So if you're a guy, you know, 180 pounds, reasonably active, you burn like 2,700 calories per day, you're looking at cutting around 2,000 to 2,200 calories. So that's about um, like 12, 12 calories per pound of body weight. Yeah, pounds, like 11 to 12 there. calories per pound of body weight in there. Um, okay. And then if you're extreme dieting, I'd say that's like a 1,000 plus calorie deficit. So 1,700 calories or less per day. Um, Which is not a lot. No, it's, it's, it's not. Like 1,700 calories, 
maybe you can get away with it for a few weeks. But then some people try and literally do like 50% of, of, of what they burn a day. Some of them might do you know, 1,200 to 1,500 calories a day. That's Ooh. where you're getting really extreme. And that's, that's, that, that, that is torturous. Man. Um, they, they've done, they, they, I've done uh, studies with uh, uh, military people, um, and they actually had them eat 50% of their maintenance requirements. So it's about 1,200 to 1,400 calories per day. And mm -hmm. they had them act, like, exercise a lot. And they, they tried to, they, they, it was like a six month study. And literally, it, they, and this is, this is, there's no cheating. There is no cheating for these guys because they have they're given the food they have and they're forced exercise. So it's not like someone where they're doing extreme dieting for a few days and then they can go and you know splurge and have a cheap meal or, or like or just accidentally cheat or just take some time off the gym. They're forced into this structure for several months. Mm -hmm. Some of those guys were literally cutting off their fingers so they could get out of the study because it was so brutal. So this is what people don't realize when they're doing that extreme approach. They don't realize that if they were actually to 100% fall through on it, how brutal and torturous it was. Like these guys were depressed because it's it, their it's like their their body is starving to death. They're whittling away. There's only so long you can last on so few calories and so much exercise before your body is done. You you all your energy reserves are are and you starve to death. Um, you know over the course of several months, you know, um, but eventually you will. So. So this approach that got morbid pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's a good thing uh, we kept this one pretty lighter. So so that's why I say if you're not enjoying your cut, you're gonna screw up. We're only human. We willpower is a it is a reserve. You only have so much willpower you can utilize. Um, and that's another reason why I get people to go into you know to meditate or do some listen to Eckhart Tolle to become present because. Whenever you're constantly obsessing about your diet or thinking about it, thinking about how much weight you have to lose, thinking about your diet all the time, you're sapping willpower for no reason. So that when you go to eat a meal, you're and then you still want a bit of food afterwards, you're more likely because you've already used willpower, just constantly obsessing about it. So mm -hmm. I have to teach people to become present and not to think about it unless they have to. But now we we fleshed this out beautifully. Let's talk a little bit about the the you know how to shift into maintenance. So yeah. let's say you've been cutting correctly, you know, um, and you got to your goal. Maybe your goal is 12% body fat. You just want to be reasonably, you know, fit and cut. Or maybe it's 7%. Well, you still have to maintain that same structure that you that you were doing before. So maybe you were doing intermittent fasting where you're, you know, fasting in the morning. This is a question I get. It's like, Greg, you know, I was fasting yet lean. It worked really, really well. Um, I got my six-pack, but do I have to keep fasting? And I tell them, you know, like yeah, fasting is really enjoyable. Like you know, if you're you know, it's gonna. I mean, you get great work productivity. It's got tons of health and life extension benefits. Um, and fasting makes makes uh, maintenance so easy. So okay. keep fasting because when you're fasting, like if you were to eat like you know four or five meals a day, you know, and, and you don't have to think about this diet training stuff all the time. Well, I mean, you got to plan your meals accordingly. Even when you're maintaining, you have to plan your meals. You got to cook, prepare meals quite often, um, and you can't really eat big ass meals even though you're, so you can't even like eat like that point of like true satisfaction. So keep, so I mean fasting makes maintenance so easy because now you have even more calories to work with, mm -hmm. so you need to have even more kick ass meals or even incorporate some more desserts and treats after your meals if you're eating two, three meals a day, it's no problem. Yeah. Um, and so it feels like you're, so if you're fasting and you're eating maintenance, it doesn't feel like that at all. And plus, if you're maintaining and fasting, you can go out to restaurants, and if you have some idea of how much you're getting in, um, then you can get away with it pretty, pretty well. Um, but the first thing I would do is, let's say you finish your cut, I'd find out how many calories you have to work with in order to not be gaining weight, not be losing weight. So let's say you're eating 2,000 calories a day, and the last couple weeks of your, of your cut, you're losing a pound a week. Well, a pound a week represents about a 500 calorie daily deficit. So you can actually bump up your calories to, to 2,500, and then you won't be losing weight, you won't be gaining weight. Now, you will gain three, four, even five pounds tops within mm -hmm. the first two weeks of maintenance. That's because whenever you eat more calories, more carbs, your body's going to hold more water retention, glycogen, you might regain some more muscle. And so you to give yourself a five-pound buffer, three to five-pound buffer, after that happens, your weight will stabilize. 
Um, and that's why that's a big problem that people screw up maintenance is because they try and eat at maintenance and then they gain weight so they think their metabolism is crashed and their metabolism isn't working the same. So then they go back to dieting and then they get deprived, their leptin levels get diminished at a low body fat and so they go back up. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I, this podcast is literally everyone that's thinking about doing a diet has to listen to this. Send this to your I friends. This stuff is stuff that takes years for people to learn. Um, so, so, so you ha- now you have maybe 2,500 calories to work with. So follow the exact same setup. Maybe you're, if you're eating lots of veggies and lean protein, do that too. But now you have 500 extra calories. Yay! Woo! Whippy! <laughs> <laughs> maybe you want to have more potatoes. Or maybe you want to have you know a nice slice of something at, at at the end of your day. You know, maybe you stick to your exact same diet you're doing before, but then at night you have like a, some delicious sweet potato wedges or maybe some frozen yogurt, you know, um, or maybe two or three times a week you do your diet exactly as it is, but two or three times a week you go out and you have like an awesome sushi, all-you-can-eat meal or oh, a couple of double patty so burgers. You know, there, there's very many ways to do it, but Keep your structure that you set in place because it works, and that's the structure that you sh- that should have been uh, supporting your goals and enjoyable. But now mm-hmm. you just you know give yourself that extra room. So um, what something? So a couple things that I would do as I mentioned before is find you know add, do bigger portions of carbs and a little bit more fat. You don't need to raise your protein. If you've been cutting properly, you have enough protein. Your protein your protein needs are you're not going to get anything else from more protein. You, to, to really support your uh, training and, and, and your muscle growth, you want to shift your body into a more of an anabolic state. You do that with carbs and fats. Um, carbs will help you know, uh, reduce cortisol, boost insulin to kind of to help build more muscle, um, and then fats are good for testosterone hormonal functioning. So what I usually do is I'll add, add a little bit more fat to a meal. Maybe I'll have a bit more butter or oil to work with to play around with that meal, and then I'll add a good chunk of carbs. So, you know, you know, another potato here and there, um, mm-hmm. and it's delicious. And so, in, in terms on, on that note, in terms of percentages for, um, you know, just for your macros on a daily basis, what kind of percentages do you do while cutting and, um, like on on a maintenance mode? What would your split be? So, cutting is going to be uh, across the board for dieting, whether you're cutting, lean, bulking, or maintaining fat should be constant. Mm-hmm. Fat should be about 30% of your total calories. Um, 25 or 30%. Um, because having fat as a moderate intake and even distribution um, keeps you re- keeps you satisfied, makes ensures meals taste good, and supports hormonal functioning. Mm-hmm. So uh, I always keep fat at around 25-30% of calories. Um, when you're cutting Protein needs to be at a higher percentage because you're getting less calories so that in order to get the proper amount of protein, your percentages of protein have to go up. So when people are cutting, I I like to see them do 35% protein or 40% protein, um, somewhere in there. And then you're looking at doing about 30 to 35% carbs. So it's about 30% fat, 30 to 35% carbs, and 35 40% protein. Now this is where you can kind of play around with it yourself. There's some individual variants. So if you like to go, if you like to eat lots of meat, then do 40% protein. If you don't really want that much, if you don't need to eat that much protein, or you're like, oh, this is too much meat, then go down to 35% um, protein, and then bring your carbs from from 30% to 35%. So it's like an even amount of uh, of carbs and and protein. And then if you're fine, like 30, if you don't, if some people don't really need that much fat and like to eat more chicken breast and turkey and tilapia and they don't want to you know eat like a lot of meats and stuff then they can keep their fat at 25% um, and then they, they can either bump up their carbs to 40% so it might be 35% protein so I mean there's ways to, 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 to kind of shift it but generally speaking 30% fat and then 35 35 carbs protein or 40 protein 35 carbs um, and then when you're when you're shifting into maintenance what I do is Let's say you already have your your diet in place, and you're doing 30% fat, uh, and then you know, uh, m- you know, balance of fats and uh, so balance of protein and carbs. Now you can just take that 500 calories and add it to your carbs and your fats. So you don't actually have to set new percentages. 
you could just add bigger portions of carbs and fats. So um, that's one way to do it. But as far as the percentages would work out, usually you're looking at doing about it would become like 30% fat again, and then protein might even go down to 30% because you have more calories, so it'd still be the same amount. And then uh, carbs, which would make bigger. sense because you mentioned before that you'd want you know your you'd want to bump up your portions of carbs or fats. So that's yeah. going to probably quickly count, you know, count for the extra 500 calories you get per day. Yeah, so for maintenance, you, as far as percentages, you're looking at about 40% carbs, 30% fats, and, and proteins. That's a good balanced amount. And mm -hmm. if anyone's listening, like, 40% carbs? Oh, my God. Like, don't worry. Don't worry. If you're, if you're hitting the right calorie intake, so if your body's burning 2,500 2, calories per day, and you're eating 2,500 calories per day, then there's no amount of carbs will cause you to gain fat. You're mm -hmm. burning whatever you're eating. No amount of carbs will cause you to gain fat. In fact, having more, like having a good amount of carbs, like 40% of your total calories, as opposed to like 20%, mm -hmm. is actually going to help you. Because I could quote, I could send you studies on how you know uh, uh, how carbs are insurmountable in testosterone hormonal functioning for your women. Um, so I mean, it's going to support your hormonal system. You're going to sleep better because carbs trigger the release of serotonin. So you're going to be more relaxed and you sleep better. Um, and carbs are important in anaerobic training, so strength training. So you're going to perform better, and then carbs actually impact gene expression for muscle growth more favorably than eating tons of than eating like 40, 50 percent fat, um, because carbs are insulogenic. And if you have the right calorie intake and you get that boost of insulin, it's going to help drive muscle growth. Um, so don't be scared of carbs. When you have the right calorie intake, carbs will help you. Um, the one caveat is that I find that as far as, you know, I find that people are better off eating carbs later in the day mm -hmm. uh, because then you feel relaxed and, and chilled out at night as opposed to in the morning when you're working and stuff. So, Interesting. Uh, and, and I find it's easier to control carb intake when you have carbs a couple times a day as opposed to every few, with every meal. Um, so, so my approach is like, you know, have a few pieces of fruit per day, you know, uh, you know, because fruit is very, it's relatively pretty low in calories and has lots of nutrition. And then, you know, a couple times a day, maybe with lunch and dinner, you have some potatoes or some sweet potatoes. Um, so we Actually, fleshed this out pretty, pretty well. So the whole general idea is you're going to, you're going to find out what your maintenance is. And mm -hmm. usually maintenance is around, you know, whatever you're cutting with, it, whatever weight you're losing, you can add that, whatever deficit you're in, if you're in a 500 calorie deficit, 600, 700 calorie, you can add that to your cutting plan. And so, yes, a bit more fat, a bit, keep protein the same, a bit more fat and a lot more carbs. Um, and then you can, and then, and then you can, basically what's going to happen is whenever you're off, whenever you finished a cut, um, what's going to happen is that you're going to build muscle very, very swiftly for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Now your body's getting more more energy reserves. You know your testosterone's higher. Um, your training is is more optimal, um, and so you're actually gonna. Most people will gain muscle for a few weeks after they finish a cut when they if with they eat maintenance properly. Which and is, so just so to help people implement it for their particular situation and um, you know and weight and everything, uh, to calculate your actual maintenance calories, it, it's taking your body weight times fifteen, right? I mean, I, in, in general, there's there's different ways to calculate it, but that seems that's to be one of the really most good, accurate. That's a really good starting point. Um, and then for the actual cut, for a deficit, you want to hit whatever your body weight is times 12. Yeah. Which would be your total calorie intake, you know, on a daily basis. Exactly. Uh, okay. And then if someone that's more overweight, let's say someone has like 50 pounds of fat to lose, maybe mm -hmm. like 230 pounds, well, I would have them do 11 calories um, because they're, you know, they're bigger... They're, they're, someone at like 10% body fat is going to burn a higher portion, a proportion of um, their, they're, they're going to have a higher uh, multiplier. So someone mm -hmm. at 10% body fat might have a, a perfect 15 calorie multiplier. Whereas someone that's overweight, because um, fat doesn't burn as many calories as lean, as lean mass, um, it's going to be lower. So someone that's really overweight, their maintenance might be 14 calories or 13 and a half calories. Um, but, you know, for most of the guys that are, you know, still like at a healthy body weight, you know, under 20% body fat, you know, and reasonably active, 15 calories per pound is a good, good starting point. 
it might need some adjustments 200 uh, up or down 200 calories up or down either way mm -hmm. but yeah that's right like 15 calories per pound it's funny how often this is bang on the 15 calories per pound of body weight um, but if you're someone that it doesn't really move much sitting down all day might go lift uh, do a strength training workout three days a week and maybe get a bit of walking on the other days 14 is a safer bet and I, guys I know we've thrown out so many numbers you guys have percentages and chem multipliers and all this stuff. So right now, go to kinobody.com slash 80. We have that mapped out so you can actually see it, and you can know exactly what you have to do to maintain your body fat um, after you cut. And I said body fat because your weight will come up a few pounds from water, glycogen, a little bit more lean mass, but maintain your body fat. I'll lay it out the exact strategy and how you can either basically have the choice between either you know, playing around with the extra calories each day or doing, you know, your same cutting days a few days a week and then doing higher calorie days a few days a week. Both those plans will work. It's whichever is more enjoyable for you. So that is uh, kinobody.com slash, that's a forward slash 80, and definitely give that a download. You know, save it somewhere important because you're going to have to reference this later. It's actually, it's really cool. It's called the Low Body Fat Maintenance Guide. And it's like, it's, it's, seriously, like if you think about this, there's everybody's so concerned about like grinding and getting, you know, getting cut, but they don't really think about what's, you know, like how to change things up or the appropriate way to change things up after they're there. So this is a, it's really a gap of like what a lot of people don't think about in terms of their diet, and it's really important because if you, if you disregard this, what happens after you finish your cut, um, it's gonna, like I said in the very beginning of this podcast, it's gonna just perpetuate a yo-yo dieting cycle because you're not gonna have the tools that you need to maintain it. Um, so it's really, really important. So go to kinobody.com slash 80 and download the guide. It's totally free. Just put in your email. I think you're, yeah, just not even your name, just your email. And um, yeah, and, and download that because it's, you know, like we said, it's it'll show you how to shift from diet to maintenance and actually maintain it so you can basically look lean and ripped year-round without feeling like you're on a diet year-round. Perfect. All right, so what do you say we wrap up? I think we've, we've given people more than enough information to, 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 to chew on. Yeah, sounds good, man. It's been fun. Yet All right, again. guys, hope, hope you enjoyed the podcast. Um, stay tuned. We're rocking out more episodes every week, so make sure to, to stay tuned and uh, listen Leave to these episodes. Leave us a review, too. If you, if you haven't yet, go to iTunes. Seriously, reviews are so helpful. And they're so important. And we read every single one of them. And we should probably start calling them out, too, on the episodes. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Leave, leave a review. We might just call you out on the next show. But uh, they're really important. Um, and like I said, we read them all one, uh, one by one. So um, if you wouldn't mind, take a couple seconds, go to iTunes, leave us a review on the Road to Rip podcast. We'd love to hear what you think about it. And if you have um, you know, any ideas for, for new episodes that you want to hear more about um, or things that you want us to talk about, let us know. You know, because we're, we're going to read them and we t always take, you know, uh, the feedback into consideration. So, yeah, so let, us, let us know your thoughts. All right, guys. Talk soon. That was Tom and Greg with the Road to Rip podcast. Ow, wow. Next time.